It's Lucy Litch, and this is Tiny House Conversations. It's the Australian-based podcast where I interview experienced tiny houses, tiny builders, and adventurers in the tiny world, so you can discover how to create, build, and transition into tiny life. Welcome back to another episode of Tiny House Conversations. Today I'm speaking with Bri Joy and Chris Edwards, who are interior designers based in Tweed Heads in New South Wales, and are also tiny house builders that aim to provide a uniquely different tiny house service with genuine care for their clients. Chris and Bri were on the show back in episode number 20, talking all about the first tiny home they were building with no experience. I wanted to have them back on the show because so much has happened since we last spoke. They completed their first tiny house build, took it to the tiny homes expos. They've been getting great feedback and are now building more tiny homes for clients. And in this conversation, we talked about the lessons, experiences and funny stories from the build process of their first tiny house, which many call the best tiny home in Australia the interior design approach they take with their tiny house builds, what makes them different to other tiny house builders and the direction they're headed with their business, big life, tiny home, the different tiny house models they offer and how much customization is possible and lots more. I always love chatting with Brian, Chris. They're so much fun and they just bring a great energy to everything that they do. So on to this tiny house conversation with Brian and Chris. Brian, Chris, welcome back to Tiny House Conversations. It's so good to have you on the show again today. Hey. We're happy to be here. Thanks for having us. Happy to share our journey. (laughs) I can't wait to dive in with you ladies because, you know, some of the listeners didn't know, I actually had you both back on the show in episode 20. And at that time, you know, you shared with with us all about the mission in tiny house building as women. And back then, I know you were just kind of starting the building process, if I remember correctly. And you're also, you've been documenting your whole journey on your social media pages, YouTube channel. And I know that so much has happened since then. And you've probably got a lot of different stories and lessons and experiences to share. But I wanted to start with, just in case anyone hasn't gone back and listened to episode 20 yet, can you just start by giving us just a bit of an overview of the project and what you were kind of intending behind it, which has now kind of turned into a, a business of sorts, I think. So, and yeah, just That's start exactly. with that. Yeah. And then, and then you know, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you some more specific things just about the build process and what you've been up to and where you're headed this year. But yeah, just what's, what's the, the mission? How did it start? And yeah. Well, we started where this was just a little bit of a side hustle. We're interior designers. We've been designing for a long time. We do lots of million dollar homes and that all sounds really glamorous and exciting but at some point we wanted to be start part of something like bigger and better and we wanted to work with our hands so um we thought oh let's build a tiny home on spec so the idea was we would build the most beautiful tiny home in australia and we would sell it for a profit well we got our hands on some tools we did and we became part of the <laughs> tiny home <laughs> And we were hooked. We fell in love. We did. We fell in love with the power tools. Yeah. And (laughs) the mission. So now we were like, no, this is our full-time business. And we went from not just throwing the home on Facebook to sell for profit to going to the Tiny Home Expo in um, September. Yeah, in Brisbane. And and then also the one down in Gosford, which is Central Coast, and showcasing our Tiny Home for sale. and. We now have five different designs. We're building the next prototype and ones for clients who've taken orders. Like now we're like, yeah. how grown up does that sound? Like we take orders for tiny <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we're starting one for a beautiful client. Uh, it's getting delivered. The Cassie is getting delivered on Friday or Monday. Yeah. So yeah. We're we're often, back on the tools again. Yeah. We're tradie ladies. We're designers. And we're now fledged businesswomen 
business owners own it yeah oh you're you're doing all the adult things I love it it's so it sounds so fun and you know I, uh, I really love it we are yeah. adulting this time you to are. the best of our ability I know <laughs> I think we're, I think we're always trying to adult it and how how well we do it I really love all of that and you know I love what you guys stand for because you know you bring this fun and vibrant energy to the tiny house space and I think also a unique point of view and a new a unique I guess, way of being as you're both women. And we know that in the tiny house space, you know, it is predominantly men as, as tiny house builders, which is obviously great, but it's so nice to, to bring, I think, thing, things in from the perspective of, of women. And, you know, I'm curious just about the build process and all of that, because yeah, as I mentioned before, like you guys were at the start of the, the build process when we spoke. So I'm wondering like, how long did that process take? And then did it come out as, you wanted it to or with you know did it maybe even exceed your expectations i think it exceeded our expectations yeah a hundred percent it yeah. actually um we were mentally prepared for things to go wrong for us to get things wrong and it was really seamless yeah. like i feel like i'm gonna knock on wood right now <laughs> so as not to jinx us but it was a beautiful build process Everything pretty much went our way. Any little mistakes we made were were quite small and easily remedied. It took us about five months, but I went to America for three weeks and we didn't get anything done. And that was with us. That was only like three, maximum four days a week. So that's why now when we sell to people, we sort of say 120 days. We possibly could even do it quicker, but we're kind of erring on the side of caution to allow for, you know weather and things like that so honestly i wish i could tell you some horror stories but we didn't have any yeah <laughs> apart from when i blew away with the air blower <laughs> i think i saw that video that made me laugh so much it's oh my I goodness i actually like in my mind didn't think that i was going to <laughs> sorry what a visitor um in my mind i didn't think it was going to blow that hard so i was kind of shocked <laughs> But I think that's kind of like the worst thing that happened was that I nearly blew Chris's head off with the blow up. <laughs> was a good <laughs> Oh, I loved your reaction with that, Chris. I remember, I do remember that video now that you're talking about it. That's oh, that's so good. And and you know, like that's another aspect that, like I mentioned before, you guys just bring so much fun to all the building process. But obviously, just everything that you do, you can really feel and see that with you guys. Uh, I'm curious about. So, you know, with the original design that you had, like did any of those, did anything change during the building process, like from the original design to any features that you had to adapt or adjust or anything like that? We had to cut back. What did we have to cut back our windows? Yeah. We so like what, five centimetres over or something? It's just little, little yeah. things that were easily remedied, like um, louver windows are actually thicker than normal windows. Who knew? Yeah. And so, <laughs> you know, as you know, you're very restricted to that 2.45 on the road. So technically, if our louver window frame stuck out a little bit, that we'd be illegal. So we kind of, yeah, we hacksawed into it. Um, this is the benefit of, I'm not trying to like, you know, toot our own horn, but as interior <laughs> designers, we've got that many years experience of uh, visualizing and then documenting and planning. So it pretty much looked exactly yeah. like we wanted. And some of the things what I'm so proud of, and I'm, this is like, I, I owe it all to Bry is there was some brave things we did, like putting decorative stair risers where I said, are people going to hate this? We were bold in a lot of ways. We've got emerald green doors, a vintage um, vanity. vanity. We've got like what looks like sort of Portuguese tiles on the um, on the stair yeah. risers. Like, are people going to hate this and just think, you know, because Australians love modern. They love modern. They're like, you know, white. 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 And let's have some white and some more white. Yeah. <laughs> and on the outside, let's make it black and timber. Yeah. And we might throw an arch in there somewhere. Yeah. And so we did things completely the way we would like them. And people, it blew yeah. people's minds. When we went to the expo, people were like, oh, my God, I've never seen any tiny home that looks like this. 
Um, I don't even see homes that look like this. It feels so different. Everybody remembered us. And like things like those stair stickers, which I wasn't going to do. And Bryce said, we're doing it. We're doing them. Like let's people, let people hate them, but be memorable. Like rather than going down the (laughs) elevator music in beige that doesn't offend anybody, but also doesn't please anybody. It was an absolute hit. So, so we think, I think that's what just made our day. It was like, okay, being bold, being brave, being unique taking some chances on the design and not just copy, 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 like, oh, well, that's what these people are doing, so let's do that, was hugely rewarded by the reaction at the Expos. Yeah, and even still to this day, like we had a we had a meeting this morning and a phone call this morning and both people we spoke to are like, this is the most, you know, I was looking at other tiny homes and, yeah, I really love them and then I seen yours and, oh, my goodness, it's the most beautiful tiny home in Australia. Like, so we <laughs> still get people saying that to us now and we're like, you know, so we did name it well with yeah. it being the most beautiful tiny <laughs> yeah. home in Australia. <laughs> so for, for those people who didn't hear our first podcast, we, like, we set as a goal to build the most beautiful tiny home in Australia, which was like pretty immodest, you know, but I was like, why not? Let's be audacious in our goals. Yeah, setting. reach for the stars. And, yeah, and people literally said that to us at the show. Yep. Even God love our Faye, who organizes the Tiny Home Expo, oh, said, yeah. I've been in every tiny home in Australia and you ladies have built the most beautiful tiny home. So mm. yeah, onwards and upwards. Yeah. We can build a few more. Yeah. You- it's not it's not just beautiful it's practical as well like it's a practical living space that is beautiful yeah, yeah. which leads into another thing which is interesting a lot of people who walked in um and we can share actually some of the reactions because they might inform some of your listeners yeah like one of them just said like so many people walked in and they'd say oh this is all you need yeah mm. or and and just that they suddenly realized like People who were maybe on the fence about tiny home living, they walked in and like, why would you need any more than this? That we heard that so, so many, many times. times. Um, we also heard like, oh my gosh, it's so light, bright, and airy. And they talked about how their homes that they lived in whilst bigger were like dark and depressing. And ours was just everywhere you looked, like looking out a window and connecting with nature and that you didn't actually need a voluminous space you know, to not feel closed in. So that was really interesting. Yeah. And it feels bigger than what it is. Yeah. Lots of good feedback. Lots I think good. that's kind of how we organically grew into a tiny home building company because of the feedback along the way that we got. And then once it was complete, people wanted it. Yeah. And hearing a lot about what people want that wasn't, that yes. our tiny home wasn't hands down the biggest thing people requested was can you do this no stairs no stairs single level so that necessitates going a bit bigger like our the first prototype was 2.45 by 7.2 so it means going up to nine but not having the double loft space and we met that many women in their 50s and 60s who said this is what I want but when I'm 85, I cannot go up those stairs and sleep in a loft. And I want this, but on a single level. So yeah. that's the very first thing we sort of came home, put pen to paper and designed. One to grow old gracefully in as a yeah. career for home. Yeah, totally. And that's a that's an interesting point because I, as far as I know, I mean, I don't know the exact statistics, but it seems to be that a large part of the demographic of people looking towards tiny house living, I think especially with the housing crisis going on, but even just I think over the years has been no women in their 50s and and that kind of thing. And so I have seen the the popularity and the demand of the the ground level without the lofts, um, the ground level tiny house become more popular. So that's great that you guys are looking at doing that too, because I think there are a lot of people, even though lofts can be fun and, and, you know, there's a place for them and some people really like them. I mean, I have two lofts in my tiny home. It's definitely not going to be for everyone. Yeah, yeah. I think I saw you guys have got like probably a, a loft video or something. I, I, I'm recalling, but yeah, exactly. And uh, and it means that it makes it more accessible for people. And I think what I was also hearing when you were just sharing about the the response that you got from people, like, oh, this is all that you need. And what it seems like you ladies are doing too is you're showing people like what's possible with tiny living because 
there can be this perception out there that it's, oh, you know, you're just going to be living in this small space like a caravan and blah, 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 you know, all the things. And it's like, no, actually, you can still have a really beautiful home that you love to be in that is, you know, physically beautiful but also has a really nice energy you have everything that you need and as you mentioned before also like a practical and functional space as well and to be able to do it differently because I do agree there are like because the the space is being flooded by tiny house builders and I'm you know getting being contacted by new tiny house builders all the time to come on the show and and or just asking questions and stuff there seems to be I think a lot of people are influenced by each other and sometimes some of the designs and this is not a criticism at all but some of the designs can be like quite similar or look you know the say you see the same things happening over and over and over again especially like some different features and so you, you ladies are doing it a bit differently and I love that you have that unique stamp of an experience of being interior designers too so uh, yeah, it's no surprises what kind of response and feedback that you got. And it's nice to know that you achieved your goal of building the most beautiful tiny house in Australia. I I love that. And I'm just curious as well, because I know you probably had many lessons that you've learned along the way. So are there any kind of big key lessons that stand out for you? For me, it's probably when you do insulation, make sure you cover up because Chris and I did not. (laughs) When we did the insulation, I'm pretty sure we had minimal clothing on. We had, and then we did the insulation and suddenly we're like, oh my gosh, so itchy. (laughs) And our builder mix like, oh yeah, that's day for like a week. (laughs) Yeah, pretty bad. That's a really good lesson to learn. You cover up from head to toe. Head to toe. <laughs> like goggles, absolutely everything. Were well, you guys wearing like it. shorts and a and a, and a singlets or something? Tops on. Yeah. Like shorts. Oh, ridiculous. ridiculous. And um, pretty, I'm pretty sure our builder was watching its do it. Lapping. Lapping. <laughs> Going, these idiots. <laughs> At least it, it would have been entertaining. Yeah. What about what about yourself, uh, Chris? I was quite lazy and not protecting our floor after we laid it down and thinking that we could just paint neatly and oh. like do things neatly. Oh my I god! I had to follow her around with a cloth. Yeah, it was ridiculous. <laughs> like just invest in that cardboard <laughs> that you cut and you like tape down. Just because I didn't want to spend what two hours going and getting it and taping it down. Oh, I just cost Brian like probably so, yeah, eight yeah, hours yeah, Brian, of cleaning. Um, eight hours on her hands and knees, following Chris around, picking up all his spots. Yeah. <laughs> That is so funny. It's sort of like little things like where, yeah, you just kind of don't know. Yeah. And also like a lot of people, like a lot of the topics around tiny home that we've discovered we didn't even know was such a big topic when we started this was weight. So oh my gosh, weight. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about it. weight. Okay. So most of the trailers and um, um unless you spend like $30,000, are rated to 4.5 ton. It's very mm. hard to build a tiny house that is 4.5 ton. We can now do it. Like we are changing our cladding. We're changing a couple things. And for this one, we couldn't have all our styling items and our fridge. We were so naive. We threw the deck in there thinking, yeah. you know, we're like, no, nope, got to pull that stuff back out, put it on the back of the tow truck, transport it, and then then put your styling and your furniture and and your fridge and things like that back in. So through a lot of research and think about every single thing, like can you shave something down from 11 mil to 9 mil, et cetera, we've achieved it now, but we think there's a lot of tiny homes out there that are definitely overweight. And the problem is then when you go to, say, register in New South Wales, you need to weigh it. Yeah, so it just opens up a can of worms. So we now commit to people that we give them a weight certificate and um, we've got this like amazing new cladding that hardly weighs anything and never needs to be painted. It's beautiful. and um, But we just had to push the envelope because we did what other people do, right? Like looked and went, oh, other people are using this. So that must be okay. We'll use this, but it isn't. It's so not. instead from, from here forward, we're blazing our own path we are never going to rest on our laurels and stop inventing and stop looking for new, better, superior materials. 
And yeah, people are now strange, even though we're the new kids on the block, we are getting copied left, right, and center. Yeah, it's we are. Really? Insane. And we take it. To, um, yeah, it's, it's a little upsetting at first, because if yeah. we get ideas, we make sure we get them from overseas builder. We don't take ideas from Australian builders, but they are 100% taking ideas from us. But that's okay. Because it's a compliment. It's a compliment. And the thing is, with each buyer, we are going to design it for them. So it's like if they want black and white stair risers, if they um, want a different bench top, if they want us to match their house with their cladding, it's not going to be like, oh, pick color scheme A, B, or C. We're actually going to treat them like we would any interior design client, do a mood board for them, personalize it so that none of no two of our tiny homes will ever look the same. So we don't think like they can copy all they want. They'll have a lot of keeping up. To yeah, you. it'll be yeah. They'll, they'll just they'll be like <laughs> us behind us. It's okay. Like in the end, we think we're providing such a service and making it so special for each buyer that it doesn't matter if somebody copies our windows or some little idea that we've engineered. So. Yeah. And I guess, yeah, it is a compliment, but I guess at some point you're like, especially if it happens again and again and again, but I think that like you guys have got the right attitude around it too, because you're, you're just really focusing on like what you're doing and trying to be, you know, at the cutting edge and, and, you know, just giving the, the customer, you know, a beautiful, a beautiful tiny home that is, you know, unique to them. So I, I love that. And I guess just one last question before we move into uh, a bit more about your tiny houses and what you're, what you're doing now and what your plans are for the year ahead. But just what you were talking before about just some of the, the things that you learned. And so I, I'm curious, are there any like skills or parts of the building experience where you've learned that either of you should not be put in charge of next time? We are never. <laughs> We are never putting up a ceiling again. No. <laughs> I want somebody to put up a ceiling. This is not meant for women above the age of 40. I, I don't think it's meant for women above that. I don't think it's meant for anyone. It's just not meant. It is like the most insanely taxing, difficult job to hold sheets up, glue them, screw them. Oh, we pre drill them yeah. and then screw them. Like now never putting a ceiling up again. I think we were almost about to quit after putting the ceiling up and that's Aww. like kind of right at the start. Like yeah. we were dead. <laughs> we were like, wow. <laughs> I actually even did better than Chris on yeah, that day. I, <laughs> I think um, actually, I think we'll probably outsource um, painting the exterior. And that yeah. is for like a real someone like, I'm a good painter, but I've only ever painted interiors, right? So anybody who's doing it themselves, oh my gosh, exterior, like the sun and the heat or wind or dust. Like I was like, oh my gosh, like one day it's too hot. Yeah. And so it's drying before you like rolling and then it does this weird stuff. And like, and then if it's too cold, it's drippy. And then if it rains before the paint is set I'm like oh I can't I just can't fight with the weather with painting exterior inside no problem we'll do that but we've got fancy new cladding we oh we don't yeah we don't even need to paint the outside we got fancy new lightweight cladding yeah that's that's amazing um, what do you call it it's powder coated yeah so yeah you'll never have to paint it again yeah pretty good yeah okay well we need to hear we need to hear more about that in a second I would love to just know like you know on the back of the tiny homes expos I know and you're talking about how you you've been building for a few different customers you've got some new designs and all of that so yeah what is the new direction for you now that you're kind of you've become tiny house builders what what's the plans for this year we like to think that we're more than tiny home builders. We're like a tiny home service. Yes. Yep. So we will, like, we start out by literally sending people on a weekend away through yep. Tiny Away. So, like, if they um, pay a deposit just to make sure that they experience a tiny home and that they like what they like and what they don't like, we will call their local council and gather information for them. We'll put them in touch with. Um, our financing guy, we'll put them in touch with our insurance agent, we'll put them in touch with the uh, Briny who puts together people who have land. So we and we are now also doing little tiny modulars so we can self certify and organize local builders for them. Literally, our goal is to take all of the stress off of them, put it on us, 
and look after them from woe to go. Like look after the whole process. Like granted, I'm not saying we are doing all these things, but we'll be matchmakers. We won't just leave them to research everything and then and then we just drop it off. You know what I mean? And be like, oh, check yes, hope it, hope it fits, hope you, there's no problems with delivery. We'll like do a little video with them to make sure that um, there isn't going to be problems with delivery. And so we kind of had to ask ourselves like, okay, is it enough that we're building a more beautiful tiny home or do we need to differentiate ourselves even more? And so this is our way of differentiating. And then, yeah, we can tell you more about the new designs, yeah. um, which were very much a response to what people asked for. At the yeah, show. the two shows we yeah. did our like research and this is how our new designs came about was from people's feedback. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to hear more about the designs because you talked about a ground level design too with no loft. So yeah, but, um, if you want to share more about those. Yeah, sure. So one is very close to this design, but no loft. So it just gets a bit longer. The roof becomes like a beautiful um, pitched roof with vaulted ceilings inside. The next one is actually what we call our Airbnb model, which is low on storage, high on luxury. So it's like a hotel suite with like really luxury finishes. You can fit a king bed in there. There's hardly any kitchen. There's not much wardrobe, but instead you just get all the space, tons of glass. So we picture, you know, somebody's probably putting this in a pretty nice location. So that's our Airbnb model. And then what else do we have? Uh, We've got our office yeah home office which is again little home office pods have been around for a while like right so we're like what can we do that's different well we just don't want it to look like some place that you get work done at home right away from the kids away from the noise but you'd never want a client to come instead we are building what quite what is the equivalent of like a fancy smancy office like with beautiful timber veneer cladding inside and floating shelves and big picture windows and beautiful like doors that all peel back and vaulted ceilings and yeah and like luxurious a, meeting space yeah like with a built-in leather banquette seat so it's like okay well you're gonna work at home you're putting this thing in your backyard what if you live in a three million dollar house do you really just want a shed that you work out of I don't think so <laughs> yeah so yeah the home office and then the modular and then the modular so we know as with Queensland's, with Anastasia Palaszczuk came out in November and they basically approved secondary dwellings, no need to get building approval or material change of use. <clears throat> All you needed was a building approval. We saw an amazing opportunity to provide that. So in suburban areas, it's up to 40 square meters. In semi-rural, it's up to 80. We are already doing one that's 80 for a client. And in that case, instead of being on wheels, it goes on little um, pure foundations. It gets delivered on skids. We've educated a lot of people about this. The upside is there's no weight issue. It can be as, it's bigger. Um, you save the cost of the trailer, but that mostly gets eaten up by the cost of certification, a crane delivery, and putting in pure foundations. But it's not far off. So, you know, if you don't need it to be on wheels and then it increases the value of your property, but it's still adhering to the kind of tiny home yeah. principles. It's just not tiny home on wheels. wheels. So, you know, every council is different. In some councils, it makes way more sense to get a tiny home on wheels. Yeah. But in some place like the Gold Coast, it makes way more sense to get a modular. modular. Yeah. So um, that's what we, we had no idea. This is what we've learned since we last spoke to you. And we are so interested in this modular space, you know, let's say 38 to sort of 70 square meters, which, you know, for those people that are just feeling a bit squeamish about the tiny house on wheels, it's only 20 square meters, but they're done with the five bedroom house. We are so interested in this space. Mm, And I love that you have different designs for different categories because, yeah, like people can definitely use a tiny home for so many different purposes. I wanted to also go back to what you just shared before, Chris, just to acknowledge it about how you're talking, you know, when someone comes to to buy a tiny house from you, you guys are not just a tiny house builder you're you're offering. And you also said it too, um, Bri, like you're a tiny house uh, service and, you know, you're going above and beyond and, and sort of, uh, taking a lot of the hard work or the uncertainty uh, out of things for people. Because I know I've chatted to many tiny house builders. I am i haven't worked with them all, 
but it seems to be like there's still gaps and people are, are still unsure of exactly what you said before, like, well, okay, where can I park my tiny house and can I get finance and what about building regulations or, or council regulations and all sorts of things. And although like this podcast and, you know, there's other people trying to sort of create resources, I think if you've got like all of that in one place, um, especially if you're working with a sp- specific builder and then you can kind of just help them navigate that that process, you know, um, while you're building and then for when the, the tiny house is ready, I think it, it is such a beautiful service that you're offering. I feel like it ma- makes a big difference. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to acknowledge that because I think that's really beautiful yeah. and just taking that extra we're care. Be, we're trying to be a portal for making this easy a reality yeah. for people and easy it's not that we do we're so big we do everything but we know everybody who does everything so why yeah. would we just let people fend for themselves why yeah. not help connect them with whoever yeah. they need to connect with we're happy to hold hands yeah. and skip through the process with a few giggles along the way <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> I think it's it's so great to be able to to see like what the most frequently asked questions are because it is all these topics that, that we just mentioned before and just being able to point people in the right place rather than like having to you know get online and it's quite overwhelming so yeah I really love that you guys are, are focusing on that too and sort of adding that to to what you do how much customization is possible for people because you spoke before about how like you know no none of your tiny houses are going to be exactly the same because you you know you can make them unique for people but what's the extent of people of, of customization that people can do with your tiny homes your wish is our command that's it well <laughs> okay so here's to break it down more simply if you can change everything aesthetic about our our existing plans with no charge. If you want us to design a floor plan and layout that is actually like different framing, different windows and doors, if that makes sense, that means we need to hire an engineer. So we do charge 1500. It's actually less than the engineer costs. We charge 1500 to start that design process and do whole new floor plans and elevations for you. But if you then buy, that's applied towards the cost of the tiny home. But if you don't, then we're not totally out of pocket for having given that time and money to our engineer. So we think that's pretty fair. Yeah. Okay. No, that's really good to know. And will you be also doing like different off-grid options and and other special add-ons like that that people can can select from? We do that now. And um, we've got um, some indication of pricing when people request on our website and they request information. What we don't, we don't just put package prices because every single person is completely different. As you well know, like off-grid toilet. Okay. That's compost toilet, two to 4,000, a dry flush toilet. That's 2,500 incinerator toilet, seven to 9,000 septic system, 10,000. So we wait to hear what they need. And then you get into solar. Well, we're doing a solar package for somebody who's in the Southern Highlands where it goes from below, like from zero to 40 degrees. So that battery and solar requirement is totally different from somebody in Queensland. So Mm -hmm. are they just, are they hooked into mains, but they want to boost it with solar? Like, are they living there full time? Is it Airbnb? Do they have a big flat screen TV? We literally have to interview people. Then we, we don't know anything about solar. We literally then give that information (laughs) to are they going to have a shed that the solar panels can go on? I don't know if people have, we've just learned this. Your typical 7.2 tiny house is not big enough for sort of 12 solar panels, especially if you have a skylight. So it needs to either go on a rack or if they're going to build a little shed to store stuff or put their car, it can go on top of the shed. So that's why it's like no two off-grid packages are ever the same. And that's what we want to tell people is we can certainly help them understand what the range is. You yeah. know, solar might be kind of 10 to 20,000. And we just talked about toilets, but their custom package should, and any time tiny home builder that they're dealing with should be really tailoring that to them. So they're not paying $1 more than they need to. Absolutely. And it'll also depend on like what kind of appliances people have too, because obviously things that you use for, yeah. for cooking, like ovens and stoves and 
you know, if people are using toasters, hair dryers, kettles, all sorts of things, it's definitely going to be like completely different, um, you know, their, their needs for, you know, how big the solar system is. And you're right, uh, Chris, in saying that, yeah, tiny roof is, uh, is not big enough. A side note here from experience of doing my own research for solar for my tiny, speaking to a, a few different companies, when I got quotes, often they say, this is actually an undersized system for, for what's possible with your tiny ho- home roof, like the space of the roof, especially like you said, with having a skylight too. So those uh, external options of like a, a rack or a ground mount or even a trailer uh, and that it is completely different for everyone. Cause yeah, it's easy to go, well, what's, what's the best solar system and you know, what brands and who, what are people using and all of that, but it, it, it's got to kind of come from your, your requirements. Uh, and I guess a, a side note, note on that, if if you're listening and you're wondering a bit more about just you know how to go about calculating your solar needs and and just more information on off grid solar, you can check out episode number I think it's number fourteen with Matt Porter from SAE Group up in Southeast Queensland. So I'll put a link in the show notes for that. Uh, and you mentioned so you had a client there in the Southern Highland Highlands. So I'm assuming are you shipping all around Australia? Yeah, so we will ship wherever you want it to go, basically. So good, so good. And are you, do you guys have like are you going to have a showroom or something like that where if someone's in the local area or maybe they just wanted to come and take a trip out to you to, to see you've got like a, a display model and, yeah, what, what are your plans for all of that? So we did sell our display model, um, but we will be building a new prototype. We're building the single level. Yeah, we're going to build that. And we just had a conversation about this this morning. Yeah. Like, please, anybody who wants to comment, let us know. So we have this wild idea, which is where we build is really beautiful. Like there's a, a boat ramp and a river and cane fields, and it's like 10 minutes from the beach. And we're like... View of Mount Warning. Yeah. What if we parked it there and then made it available for Airbnb and people could come stay in it if they want, but we'll only rent it out a certain amount of times. So we've got plenty of other times to show them through, but then there's like people can actually stay in it. So that's our wild new idea of how to make the most out of our prototype. Oh, that's a good option. I feel like that's something that would be different to what other builders are doing too, because often you can maybe just go and have a look at their display model, but not necessarily actually stay in it so yeah that's uh yeah, so that's really cool our airbnb stay in a big life tiny home yeah and tell us what you think yeah and also i guess they they just they can kind of depending on where they are in the country also just maybe make a little a little trip out of it which would be fun too i love that we literally have people who say i'm coming up that way i'm gonna be on the sunshine coast it's like a big drive like imagine if we're we have stay the night you know yeah. like <laughs> We'll yeah. take you out to lunch, then you can stay in the tiny home, and then we'll talk about it. Yeah, so yeah. watch this space. We might try to do that. Yeah, that's so good. Okay, yeah, watch this space. And, okay, so if someone okay. is wanting to work with you ladies, what does the process look like as a customer? I, I sound so cliche saying this, like fill out the contact form online or just give us a call. I think last weekend we had like had like five different conversations with people. We will spend a little bit of time on the phone with you, literally just listening and getting to know you because that determines whether we're your people. We will not hesitate to send you to another tiny home builder if we yeah. feel like we're not your people. Like, and you know what? Other tiny home builders have been really supportive of us and sent people to us. So um, we just want to get to know people where they're at, why they're doing this. Um, where they are in the process, what their budget is, what their timeline is, what their dream is. And then we go away. Some people are maybe six to 12 months away from making a decision. The woman we met this morning was like ready to go. So we're sending her a contract this afternoon, but we actually, we have lunch with people. We honestly, we're not here to just email you stuff. Like let's chat, let's get to know you. I love that. Making it a more personal, personal experience, which I think is um, yeah, making a, a more of an experience for people and and knowing that, you know, you're finding out, you know, how you can best serve them. And we're leading yeah. with that. Yeah. Like rather than being like, I'm going to send you some information and make you ask me questions. I'm going to sell you something and then I might be nice and get to know you. We're like, how about we get to know you, figure out if we Are believe matched. that we have a solution for you. 
and then we'll say your time counts. Yeah, I think that's the right way to do and it. And then you'll you know. have two best friends for life after yeah. you buy a tiny home class, oh. whether you like it or not. Yeah. <laughs> You're stuck with them whether you like it or not. I love it. Yeah, you your best now. <laughs> oh, that's so good. You know, you're talking about the weight before and then the dimensions. And I think for from what I know, just speaking to different builders, that there's the caravan standards because obviously there's no specific regulations for tiny house for constructing a tiny house but then there's also the national construction code but that only technically applies to fixed dwellings you know without being on a trailer and all of that yeah so I'm, I'm just curious about yeah what um what spec your your builds are building definitely to, to yeah. building standards yeah. so yeah. for example like, like it's less a mini mansion it's a mini mansion and like, it's been so, yeah. built like that over yeah. and above with insulation we do not do cheap windows and doors. We do not do cheap hardware. Like we're going over and above. Um, I have to say, after our tiny home, I got to brag. I get, you know, traveled to Brisbane and back. I traveled to Sydney and back. Like barely a crack, barely a crack. It held together so beautifully. And because we've thought about every single material. That was all my gapping. Yes. Every single silicone <laughs> joint, you know. So. They get abused more than a house, so it's got to be better than yeah. a house, you know. So yeah. that's that's sort of the standard we're going to. Oh, beautiful. Okay, Answer that's that, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think the last time on when you were on the show, you talked about how you were starting your YouTube channel. So do you want to let everyone know a little bit about that? And I'm, I mean, I know you're sharing stuff on your your Instagram page as well, but did you end up using the uh, the name? What, what was it again? Was it Shazza and uh, oh, the, shitty shed, sh- the Shitty Shed Show or something? Shazza and Skip <laughs> from the Shitty Shed Show. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. That was a troll, by the way. <laughs> we, saw, we got trolled. <laughs> I know, I know. I remember you talking about that in a video or something, and I was like, you know what, like, even though you got trolled, that's pretty hilarious, like, and quite that entertaining. The best trolling <laughs> ever. <Yeah. laughs> I'm like, we should make a series out of this. <laughs> yeah, so, so we sort of left, we left the first one on YouTube almost like a series, and we've just been brainstorming maybe a new opening, almost like a sitcom, you know, yeah. for... Our next build, which starts in a week. So, because we're not clueless anymore, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. We'll be sharing our expertise, but we promise to continue to be silly. Yes. Yeah. It wouldn't be the same if you weren't, you know? And uh, I don't know. Ma- well, maybe- we're, not, we're not actually acting when we're doing that. We're actually just being ourselves. So, I really don't think that it can be any other way unless yeah. we change who we are. Get a exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's what I love about you guys. And I think that's why you're resonating with a lot of people is that you can tell that you're literally just being yourselves and you know you have this really cool and fun dynamic between you you can laugh at yourselves you laugh at each other by the looks of what I've seen in your videos too you also uh, make other people laugh at you know your antics and stuff and I think that that's just really it's refreshing so I love that and I really reckon that you should buy the do name uh for the shitty shed show because maybe it might come in <laughs> handy down oh, the track <laughs> any more ideas you know so we'll just take it and run with it yeah <laughs> yeah we can we, we can thank the troll for that one yeah. oh i don't know what well, i reckon Boston? maybe shazza might be you bride just because of the aussie <laughs> kind of thing you know yeah don't you reckon yeah. like it's it's such an aussie um slang kind of name like shazza I don't yeah. know. I, I mean, unless I, I think it was an American that actually um, trolled us because it. then they started saying something about like quiches or like what was those American names they were throwing at us, uh-huh. like Letitia or like yeah. they were throwing other words around and it, they were just very American. I'm like, oh, one of these people are American. Yeah. Like they probably don't even know what Shazza is. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, it was funny. But they, know, so, they just yeah. know that we're not Kazas, that's all. <laughs> yeah, exactly, as, as long as you're not Kazza. Uh, well, yeah. thank you thank you to the troll for that one. And so as we start to to close out the conversation, ladies, is there anything you feel like you wanted to share more about, you know, the direction that you guys are heading this year or, or about, you know, your tiny house bills, your tiny house service? 
No, just that we're super open to conversations. Yeah. Like, you know, we prefer you not troll us, but we're actually open to <laughs> we're, we're open to criticism. We're open to having conversations. We're open to talking to you, even if you're like two years away from buying. Yeah. If you want to just like ask us questions or see what's possible or push us in a direction that we haven't thought of, like we are going to pivot to what the market wants and the market being you, whoever's listening to this and thinking about doing it, talk to us. And like I said, we'll, we'll try to point you in the right direction. If not, we'll, we'll have a bit of a laugh and a good conversation. Yeah. And if you do want to troll us, you just have to be warned that I will troll you back. Yes. <laughs> we will run with it and laugh. <laughs> So we just want all the creative trolls out there. Yes, <laughs> so creative trolls it. that come up with things like Shazza and Shit Lips, the shitty shit show. <laughs> yeah, so good. Uh, and you can't say that too fast either because no. otherwise it doesn't come out. I know, it doesn't come out properly. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's so funny. Okay, yeah, that that's amazing. Thank you so much for, for saying all of that. And I think it's, yeah, just great to know that you're very approachable and that People, if they're they're curious about, you know, what's possible for their own tiny house life or whatever purpose they're going to use a tiny house for, that, that they can come and speak to you ladies. So that's great. And do you want to let everyone know where is best that they can come and find with you online, uh, find you online or just come and check out what you're doing? Yeah. Um, okay. So the website is Big Life Tiny Home, all one word and it's not plural, dot com dot au. Um, Bri, what's our Instagram? Um, our Instagram is biglife.tinyhome and that's the same across all our socials. So there's a dot in between, otherwise you'll go to somebody else's yeah. page. So um, okay. yeah, different people like to interact in different ways yeah. and um, yeah, we're open for conversation at any of those places or just give us a call. We love a chat. Beautiful. <laughs> I'm, I know you do. And I will put a link in the <laughs> show notes at tinyhouseconversations.com to, yeah, to where people can reach you. And just want to say thanks so much again to both you ladies, Chris and Bri, for joining us on the show today. Uh, it's been great to chat with you as always. I love the fun that you bring and and I just love what you're doing in the tiny house space. And it's really nice to see that you're, you know, really trying to provide a service and and best serve people as as you can and you're doing things differently and yeah it's just really nice to see things being done from the perspective of women and I think we need more of that so thank you for your time today as well awesome thank you thank Lucy. you so much hon we until next time yeah yeah and I can't wait to <laughs> see what you get up to and you know the progress that you have this year and all the best with that because, yeah, it's it, and, you know, actually so I just want to say this too, like I think uh, another reason why uh, I just love watching what you ladies do is too is you make it really entertaining as well and I haven't done it in a little while but there were times where I kind of like missed out on, you know, what you guys were doing and stuff because I was so busy and then, I, and then I'd see you come up online and then I'm like, oh, I need to go back like binge watch some of your, your videos and it's just always really you entertaining and funny. Yeah. <laughs> they told us they did that yeah. they'd watch one and they'd be like i made my husband watch all your videos yeah we even had a husband <laughs> say that he made his wife watch all our videos he's like you gotta check these ladies out like but we have been a little quiet on socials because we have had our head down bum up in design phase yeah and yeah. christmas and christmas yeah. and all that yeah. jazz but once we're back on the tools um yeah, yeah our tune in our show our shitty shed show will start again for sure <laughs> <laughs> Oh, stay tuned for the Shitty Shed Show. I love it. All right. Well, thank you so much again, ladies. And if you're listening to us at home, thank you so much for being here as always. Uh, make sure you go check out Big Life Tiny Home on Instagram, the website. Again, the link links will be at tinyhouseconversations.com. And stay tuned every Thursday for new episodes of Tiny House Conversations. I'll see you next time. Thanks again for listening. And if you enjoyed the conversation today, you found it valuable and you want to support the podcast, the best way you can do that is to share the love. That way I can keep bringing you more tiny house conversations to help you on your own tiny journey. So here are three ways that you can support the podcast. Number one, if you have a friend or family member that you feel would benefit from hearing these conversations, feel free to share it with them, email them, text them, send them a telegram, do whatever you need to do to share it with them. Number two, if you hit the subscribe button, you'll know exactly when the next episode is live. 
And number three, if you head on over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening to podcasts and leave a five-star rating and review, thank you so much in advance. I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next episode.